So one of the things that we've learned from our research into high-performing organizations is that there are a common set of attributes that are displayed across each of the organizations that we've studied. Even though what they do is very different, those attributes get repeated time and again in, in the organizations that we looked at. And they become almost part of the culture, the, the DNA of the organization itself. They're not uh, ingrained in individuals, in individual people or in the individual leaders in the organization, but they define how the organization and what the organization is, um, in, intrinsically cultural in nature. Um, and they essentially form the what of performance. If you want to drive high performance in an organization, you need to be thinking about each of these 12 attributes. We've identified 12 common attributes that define high performance in organizations. I'm going to give you an example of a couple of them just to give you a sense as to kind of the sort of stuff that we've uncovered. First one I'm going to talk about is ambition. Ambition is really, really important when it comes to driving high performance in an organization. Organizations that have ambition at its heart, that have a, a very clear, defined vision of where they want to go, and that that's stretching and, and, and forcing people to think differently, um, by definition, are setting themselves up to be high performing. Organizations that lack ambition, again, by definition, are setting themselves up to be moderate, average at best. Um, one of the dynamics that happens with ambition is it, it, it creates an energy within the organization, a focus on trying to achieve better all the time, and a, a, a drive towards innovation and different thinking. So by way of an example, one of the places that we saw this in action is the Grameen Bank in Bangladesh founded by Dr. Muhammad Yunus in the early 70s, his ambition was to try and use micro-lending to eradicate poverty in Bangladesh, which is a poverty-stricken uh, nation. And over time, it forced people within the bank itself to think very differently about conventional banking and how they would go about doing that differently in order to force uh, societal change with their borrowers. It's no coincidence that the Grameen Bank is the only corporate entity that's ever won the Nobel Prize over its 40-odd year history. It's, it's helped a lot of families rise out of poverty. And for us, ambition is one of the reasons why that's defined, it, it, it defines itself as a high-performing institution or organization. A second common attribute that we've noticed in high-performing organizations is something that we call the performance gap. Performance gap is unbelievably important when it comes to driving uh, sustained high performance. Essentially what we mean by the performance gap is the relative distance between the best and worst performer in a group of people, whether that's a team or across an entire organization. By maintaining a very narrow gap, it helps force a dynamic of continual pressure to improve performance. Where you allow the gap to widen, that dissipates pressure from a performance perspective, and over time, uh, performance of a team with a wide performance gap drops over time. Where you keep it narrow, performance rises over time. Another attribute of high-performing organizations is around decision-making, and in particular, high-performance decision-making. High-performance decision-making is really about making sure that decisions are made as close to the action as possible, as far down the organization as possible. The way that you get that is by being clear about what matters most and also kind of enabling people to be able to make decisions and where, where, where they're, they're delivering action, as it were. Um, one of the outcomes of that is that you find that high-performing organizations make more, better quality, faster decisions. They're, they're more agile. Um, and it, part of the reason for that is they've empowered their people, not just with the expectation that they will be making uh, decisions, but also with the processes and the structures to enable them to make really smart decisions. That's one of the defining characteristics of a high-performing organization. Why do these attributes matter? These attributes are really important for leaders and organizations to understand because it's the key to driving sustained performance. So what we've done by identifying the 12 common attributes is to arm leaders with the information and, and the insight to, to translate that into concrete ideas as to how they go about driving sustained performance in their own organization or institution.